All right, so today's lesson is uh, another day of PEMDAS where we're going to pretty much focus on addition and subtraction. Yesterday we introduced the foundational parts. We talked about addition and subtracting being subtraction being like students in a lunch line. Uh, take a second again, especially if you're at home doing this or wherever you might be, because you need to make as many mistakes as possible now. You'd rather make them now before you get to the quiz. That way you have them out of the way and you can ask for help. Uh, but take a second to answer this question real quick on a sheet of paper. Um, based off of what you learned on the first one. If you did not watch the first video or were not here for the first lesson, make sure you go back and watch the first video because it taught you everything you need. And what I'm not going to do because I want to make this quick is repeat myself in this video on things that I taught you before um, in order to teach you that stuff. So go ahead and pause the video real quick, try this out, and let's see what you get. I'll start answering now. What we learned was that addition and subtraction are like students in a lunch line. We also learned that the thing we are focusing on is not the numbers, it's the operations. So minus, plus, plus, minus. Well, addition and subtraction are on the same level. And so because they're like students in a lunch line, you feed the first operation in line. 10 minus 7 is 3. Then you copy everything else that you did not use. So plus 3, plus 2, minus 1. Once again, we're looking at these things here plus plus minus well again they're on the same level so 3 plus 3 is 6 copy the rest plus 2 minus 1 once again we're focusing on the operation 6 plus 2 turns into 8 8 minus 1 turns into 7 that should be your answer and again if you did not get it make sure you talk to your teacher email them write it down and make sure you ask about it bring the paper to them the more you ask about things the better off it's going to be so once again i'll say if you have not watched the first video or seen the first gone through the first lesson and you missed the question above make sure you watch that as soon as possible because the rest of the video is going to move on and incorporate something different based off of what we learned yesterday so if you didn't really get what we did on number one or you know even if you didn't watch the video but you understood that you should be moving or that you get that you were going to deal with the first operation in line sorry you can't see it but that we're going to feed the first operation in line then you should be okay but if you were lost definitely go back and watch 1.1 now so the question is what is algebra i googled it because you should do that anytime you don't know something google it you have people who will tell you exactly what you're looking for it says the part of mathematics in which other i'm sorry letters and other general symbols are used to represent numbers and quantities and formula and equations bottom line is you're going to see letters and symbols now you really won't see symbols as much but you're definitely going to start seeing letters because that's what algebra is so algebra uses letters and general symbols to represent numbers the toughest part of algebra is letting go of our own stubbornness. This word here causes a lot of problems. It gets people kicked out of class. It gets you uh, in trouble in class. It gets you in trouble in the office. It gets you kicked out of school. It gets all kinds of things because you're just being stubborn. And I'm pretty sure people who have been through that stuff can look back and say, yeah, I think I was just stubborn. I wasn't going to listen to what people were telling me. If you let go of your stubbornness, just learn how to create, or I'm sorry, incorporate the letters and symbols into what you're doing. So the first way we're going to work with letters and symbols is something called substitution. We use substitution all the time. A couple of really well examples. A shirt in a store costs 13 You give the owner $13. The owner gives you the shirt. Well, what happens is you substituted your $13 with the shirt. They switch places. The owner who had the shirt substituted their shirt for your $13. That's substitution. All right, so you literally took your money and you substituted the $13 you had in your pocket. You gave it to someone who then traded you that $13 for a shirt. That is substitution. It's not a tough concept. The thing you have to do is make sure you understand how it works. Another thing happens. You spend four years in high school to earn a diploma. So you work hard for four years to pass all of your classes. The school gives you a diploma. You substituted four years of work for a diploma. So you put your four years of hard work in, you do your best to pass the classes, because if you don't pass them, trust me, you're going to have to retake them somewhere or somehow. But you do four years of work, hard work, and you get a diploma, which will then get you um, access to jobs and money and things that you need to pretty much succeed in this world. The school held the diploma, but it traded the diploma that it had for your four years of hard work both of you traded you took your four years of work you gave it to the school the school gave you a diploma the diploma took the 
the school took the diploma that it had. It saw that you did four years of hard work. It traded its diploma for your four years and then everything went on. Why is everyone happy? Because the values of each part was the same. Mathematically, you could look at it like this. The shirt equals $13. Because the shirt is $13 and you'll eventually find out that equals means is, these two things are equal in value. So as long as you trade for things that are equal in value, nobody complains. A diploma is equivalent to four years of, I should have put hard work, but four years of hard work. And so therefore, when you trade your four years of work for a diploma and the diploma is traded for four years of hard work, everyone is happy because these two things are equal in value. So because they are equal in value or the same, it is legal, that's what that word says, to substitute one for the other. And algebra works the same way. So let's get back to this math stuff. If you see the statement x equals 3, it means that x has the same value as 3. I know we want to say x equals 3 because that's what you're going for, but what it's really saying is that this variable, x, because it's called a variable, has the same value as the number 3. So what you can do, everywhere you see an x, you could put a 3 in its place. Well, you could be a jerk and make things more complicated where everything, everywhere you see a 3, you could put an x in its place, but the bottom line here is that equal sign is what gives you the power to substitute. And so once you kind of get into that, the variables are not nearly as bad as they used to be. The thing is, you have to make sure that you um, kind of make the most of this stuff because what happens is you don't do things that I'm about to show you right now and then it causes issues. So real quick, I'm gonna do some examples. This is not a I do, this is nothing else. And again, as soon as something happens, either pause the video and email your teacher or write down what your question is because you need to get your questions addressed. If you do not get questions answered, then you don't learn anything. So anyway, simplify five minus G plus H. We've never seen this. This is where people start to quit. But notice we have some statements here. It says G is equal to four, which means I can put, I can trade these two things because they're equal and h is equal to 6. I can trade these two things because they're equal. So what I'm going to do first, which is what you need to do, is rewrite this equation because we can't do anything with letters in it. We need these to be numbers. So what we're going to do is rewrite it up to the g because everything here matters. The g though is going to be traded for a 4. And so what I'm going to do is put parentheses 4. After g is a plus, h can be traded with a 6. So I'm going to put parentheses 6. This is now a regular 5 minus 4 plus 6. Don't let the parentheses throw you off. You need to get used to those things being there. It's 5 minus 4 plus 6, which we learned yesterday because this is addition subtraction. We simply work with, whoever, with whoever's in front. So 5 minus 4 is 1. That parentheses is kind of in the way, so we don't really need to write it. And then 1 plus 6 turns into 7. Yes, that is a mathematical trick. And you're going to learn them slowly but surely throughout the year. But you want to use parentheses when you substitute, which is trade values. But when this parentheses is unnecessary, you don't need to write it. So I did not need to bring down the one for the six because it was just in the way. It just kind of made it look messy. But that's it. M plus N minus two. Well, we can't really work with this because there's letters in the way. But we do see trading statements where I can trade M out for a seven and I can trade N out for a three. So once I bump into M, I go over here to my list of things that are equal and it says that I can put seven in its place. Plus is good. N, oh, N is three. So I'm going to put three in its place. Minus two. From there, I have pretty much, again, there's nothing around these parentheses. So it just says seven plus three minus two, which means do the addition first. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 minus 2 is 8. That is the answer. The problem itself isn't hard. It's making sure you start practicing doing the stuff the right way. Now here is where you need to be careful. Y minus X plus Z. What most people do is they say, well, Y is 4 and X is 7 and Z is 1, but that's not it. Y is actually 7. So you need to read the label properly. Y is going to turn into a 7. X is going to turn into a 4 and Z is going to turn into a one. Don't let the parentheses bother you, start getting used to it. It just simply says seven minus four plus one. Seven minus four turns into three. I don't need that because it wasn't doing anything. Three plus one turns into four, and that is all. All right, so be sure to open your eyes to a couple of things. Although we use parentheses, that is not the P in PEMDAS. Once we have numbers only, we work out the order of operations as usual. 
in all, nothing really changes. You just have to be sure to practice properly. As I said, practice makes permanent. If you don't do it the right way now, it's going to hurt you. Um, you should just plan to always use parentheses when you substitute. All right. Doesn't mean we're always going to use parentheses, but plan to always use it because there are some times when you don't need it. But we'll talk about that before that happens. Right now, until you hear anything else, assume that you're going to have to use parentheses. Uh, it is the best way to organize your work and it does keep you from making silly mistakes. For example, if I take this calculator and I type in, because these two things look the same, negative three squared and parentheses negative three squared look the same, but the issue is they are not the same. Let me get this to a point where I can see. Sorry, I'm kind of dark here in the room. Anyway, negative three squared, if I type this in as it is, negative three squared, I get the answer negative nine. If I type in exactly what I see here, parentheses negative 3 close squared, I get the answer of 9. Obviously, because these two things do not equal the same, they are not the same. And the difference is the parentheses. So if you're careless with your parentheses, it can cause you to easily miss a problem that is not really difficult to answer. So just try to start now. And again, remember that practice does make permanent. So what I want to do, and I know we're going to do this again, is I'm going to work this out. If in the middle of this, for some reason, you, you don't really understand a piece, email your teacher, pause the video, do what you need to do, but make sure you ask about it because it should be asked about while it's fresh on your mind. Otherwise, you forget about it and you don't remember what you needed to know. So simplify, which means pretty much either evaluate or solve, or pretty much means figure out what this equals when r is equal to 6 and s is equal to 10. So 8 minus r plus s. 8 is good, minus is good, r, oh, what does r mean? r is 6, I'm going to put parentheses 6, plus s, oh, s is 10, so plus parentheses 10. Remember that there's nothing going on in this parentheses, which means that these are not parentheses, they're just numbers. It says 8 minus 6 plus 10, which means, sorry, I shouldn't have done that, you just work out whatever's in front. 8 minus 6 turns into 2, plus 10, again, that parentheses was just there, and then 2 plus 10 is 12. The use of parentheses keeps me organized, but they these parentheses really are what we would call weak. We'll see stronger parentheses next week or in our next lessons. But for right now, these parentheses are just there to make sure that we're still organized. All right. So again, if you have a question, email your teacher, raise your hand, do what you need to do to get that question taken care of. So now what you want to do is pause the video real fast and make sure you try out this problem here. And then that way you can kind of see if there's any issues. I'm going to go over the answer now. So if you did not answer, go ahead and pause the video so you can do that. B plus C minus 6. Again, we can't work this out because of the variables. But what we can do is read this key, which tells us that B is 9. So put a 9 in for B. C is 2. So put a 2 in for C. This just says 9 plus 2 minus 6. It's not anything special about the parentheses. So we just work it out. 9, nine plus 2 is 11. Bring down your minus 6. 11 minus 6 is 5. And again, if you're not good at that, just put dots down for the smaller number, which is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And count down from 11. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. There you go. Simplify. R minus Q plus P. When P is equal to 3, Q is equal to 6, R is equal to 9. Please pause your video. Try that out. And that way you can see if you're doing anything wrong. And then you can deal with any issues that might still be there. I'm going to go over the answer now. R, remember, don't just assume that it's first, second, third. R is uh, substituted with a 9 minus Q is 6 plus P is 3. And so what we want to do is, again, this is just 9 minus 6 plus 3. There's nothing special about these parentheses, so don't let that overwhelm you. 9 minus 6 is 3. Then rewrite. Bring down whatever we did not use, and 3 plus 3 is 6. All right. Remember that the worksheet that we give you is not intended to be completed. It's meant to give you practice. Work at your best pace. You'll continue to improve. Now, I will tell you that even if you just take that sheet home and try to work out the rest of it, every day that you finish a sheet is definitely good. So if you can finish a sheet, it's better for your development. Just do your best to get much through as much as you can. Work together. Ask for help from other students or from the teacher. Uh, if you're in class and there's a student off, you know, another area that will help you, 
in my class at least, feel free to get up, go ask that student a question, have them help you out. As long as you're going through the material, as long as you're not over there messing around, it is fine with me. Uh, again, in my class, but just make sure that you're using each other and collaborating to try to figure out what's going on. Don't just have them give you the answer, but have them explain to you what you're supposed to do. The key to success in class, again, just depends on your effort. As we said, we can't force you to try. We can't force you to want to improve. So just work to learn. Ask questions when you need to. If you only got three questions right yesterday, make it a game. Try to get four or more today. But just keep pushing to get better, and every day you do that, you will get better. Outside of that, good luck, and I will talk to you later.